Hi, hello and welcome, Micropunter here. Now this is a bird bath and I placed a water sample of this bird bath under my microscope and there were really, I mean, I found aliens there, really, honestly, aliens. Well, um, the bird bath itself, I've never seen a bird bath uh, like that or with a, a stone bird sitting right on the edge. No bird's ever gonna bathe in that uh, bird bath because it's simply gonna be too scared um, of this little um, stone bird. Uh, but um, there are plenty of microorganisms in there. I took a little water sample, I placed it under the microscope and what did I see? I saw a whole bunch of hundreds um, of so-called rotifers. Now, rotifers, these are um, animals. These are microscopic animals. Well, they're actually not even that small. They're around a 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 millimeters long. So you're just barely able to see them uh, with your um, unaided eye. They were first uh, described by a guy called John Harris in 1696. That's quite uh, some time ago. Um, and uh, they are these rotifers are kind of important because they are not only an important food Food source uh, for um, for other um, uh, water animals, maybe fish or so, um, but they themselves also break down and clean up uh, a lot of organic material, so they keep the water clean. Now, what I've done is I've taken uh, some of these rotifers, I put them under my microscope, um, and uh, basically I saw them moving around quite happily. A rotifer has uh, three body parts: a head, a trunk, and a foot. And with the foot, it's able to attach itself to a surface, and then you can actually see that uh, it's able to move around. So, but one of the interesting things is, is that the way that they reproduce, um, they are males and females and they're so-called uh, sexually dimorphic. Now, what this means is, is that the male is generally much smaller than the female um, and uh, the female uh, carries eggs and some of these eggs uh, are laid um, or sometimes the egg is simply kept inside the female's body until the, the offspring, until they hatch. No, but the question is now, how do, how, how do the male and the female mate? And that's an interesting one. The male rotifer does have a, a penis, and what it does is it takes this uh, little um, thing and it punctures the skin of the female and ejects the sperm. Um, that's a pretty um, drastic way, and uh, the female rotifers didn't like that, so what did they say? I said, ah, I don't like that. Uh, we're just going to reproduce parthenogenetically. And what does this mean? It means uh, basically it's possible for the females also to lay eggs and reproduce and, eat, and those eggs are not fertilized. So it's a form of asexual reproduction and I think this is actually what happened here um, because there are so many um, of these rotifers and they all had the same size. I think they all reproduced asexually um, in this little bird bath. Yeah, so, and how do they eat? Uh, well, uh, you can see that uh, at the, in the head they have a so-called a corona, and th this corona has uh, some very fast-beating little hair called the cilia, and with that uh, they're able to move the water around it and all of the, um, the stuff that floats around the bacteria and, and uh, broken cellular debris and all of this stuff. Um, so all of the suspended material, and, and uh, basically it's just moving the water and it's able to catch uh, and soak it, suck, uh, suck up those uh, particles in and then it's able to digest them and another interesting fact uh, up to this day scientists have identified around 1500 to 2000 different uh, species of, of rotifers. Um, rotifers are also known as wheeled animals or wheeled animals because the, the corona with the cilia that's rotating looks a little bit like a wheel. Um, but it's also like this that there are some species and now I'm talking again about the reproduction. Um, some species completely reproduce asexually so that means there are no males there. They only reproduce uh, parthenogenetically that means uh, they reproduce uh, by uh, from a non fertilized egg and scientists were kind of wondering then I mean if this is the case they have to die out really because uh, you need some genetic variability some genetic diversity and if you only reproduce asexually you don't get that and then they think now that uh, some of those uh, rotifers what they do is, is they will actually take up genetic material they will take up DNA from the food that they eat so they kind of compensate the lack of a sexual reproduction uh, this way quite an interesting uh, concept um, I think 
think. Um, in any case, rotifers are really fascinating uh, to look at under the microscope. Uh, they're quite uh, ubiquitous. Uh, this means uh, they're quite common. Um, they're also quite easily observable because uh, they're relatively large uh, compared to other microorganisms. Yeah, and uh, yeah, get yourself a microscope and start uh, investigating some water samples. Uh, they're really worth uh, having a look at in more detail. In any case, I wish you a nice day. Happy microbe hunting as always and all the best. Bye bye.